everybody. This is Catherine Williams, your local realtor and also a financial coach. And I'm here today with Christina Apsey. She and I work together in, in the Titans office. And Christina is known as our estate planning expert. And uh, it's so nice to have you here today with us, Christina. And thank you for having me, Kathy. Yeah. And a lot of my friends are interested in knowing more about estate plans, such as wills and trusts. And I find an awful lot of people are afraid of many different things, but sometimes they think it'll take a long time, it costs too much, um, or it's just sort of a mystery and they don't know where to get started. And I was wondering if you could start by telling us um, what, what is included in an estate plan? So an estate plan, how about if I start with what is an estate plan? Because a lot of times um, the rhetoric is you, you, you say this estate plan, estate plan, it feels like an estate plan is something a lot larger than it actually is. Basically what I call an estate plan is it's like your life as an instructional manual. So in other words, you are the one that is the grantor you're the one that writes it. You're the one that um, puts in place fiduciaries that you feel you want there, that you trust, that you hold close, that you that would make decisions on your behalf in the way that you would make them if for any reason in your life, you become either incapacitated or upon your death. So basically an estate plan includes everything. It includes your living trust, which is obviously while you're living. And it also includes your last will and testament, which upon your death is the important document that you need. Um, it is a public document. Your last will and trust, or excuse me, last will and testament is a public document, whereas your living trust is a private document. It's something that you hold um, dear to you and near to you. And so basically what you're doing is you're assigning what we call fiduciary responsibilities. And within that life instructional manual, um, if you do not have it in place, the court will make that decision. And we'll go, we'll go a little bit deeper into what that looks like as we go into this uh, in, in um, a little bit deeper. But for the most part, if, if you do not have this particular estate plan or living trust and last will and testament in place, the courts will make those decisions for you. So basically, like I said, it's a life instructional manual that you are the, the author of, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Um, it holds those fiduciaries um, responsibly, responsible for those decisions for you. Mm -hmm. um, and I hope that... Um, Hope that man answers that first question about what's an estate plan and why it's so important. Um, we'll go into a little bit more of the documents, I think. I think that's the question you had asked, correct? Yeah, what documents, what documents are included in this plan? So within the Titan Financial, so Titan Financial, this is just one small branch um, that we, um, we, in terms of a tree, in terms of, um, think of it as a tree. So Titan is a tree. This is one branch of that tree of the different solutions and family um, uh, family solutions we have. Um, and so in an estate plan, in our estate plan, um, what we find also, and what I wanted to mention is um, you can actually go down to your local office depot or staples and find the documents. For an estate plan. The problem that we found and the reason why we think it's such an important part of your, your overall financial plan is because people uh, need that instruction. They need this, the, the support in, in order to put that estate plan together. And, and the reason is there's so many different documents that are included. So you, you need to know exactly what everything means and why it's so important. So within our estate plan, we have a revocable trust. And what that means, a revocable trust means that you can change it. It could be amended. We also have a declaration of trust. And basically what the declaration of trust is, um, 
is a document that entails that you have every intention of entering into that trust. And if there's any assets that are not declared, that declaration of trust is very important because it, it, it acts like a safety net to make sure that those assets are placed within that trust upon your death. Um, the cert certification of trust, the certification tr of trust is basically what I kind of call a summary of your trust, uh, almost like a receipt. It is bound, it is bound, it is notarized, and it's what all the financial institutions will more than likely ask for uh, in terms of if you need to change the names on your, um, your accounts, whether it be a bank account or a, um, an IRA or any type of retirement account, that that's a whole other conversation, obviously, but that certi certification of trust is, is basically what I call a receipt. Um, the assignment of personal property. So for instance, if you have something that's very near and dear to you that you wish, uh, maybe you have children, you wish that child to have perhaps an engagement ring that you know, has been in the family for many, many decades and many, many years, that you wish for one particular um, family member to receive, that assignment of per personal property is basically assignment of your things. And that ring would fall under your things. Um, you know, it holds a lot of sentimental for you, but it's basically one of your things. So that assignment of personal property is a way that you can assign that person that property. Um, and then we had talked about last will and testament. The last will and testament is a public document. It is, uh, uh, where you will find uh, if there's guardianship, as well as an executor. So it is a public document. As I stated before, it's something that's presented to a judge upon your death. And the judge will essentially look at your last will and testament, know that there are fiduciaries in place, and they nothing will go, nothing will go into the court's decision. They already know you have everything in place. Um, the durable power of attorney in California, they call it a California durable power of attorney. And that's basically for your finances. Uh, anything that um, uh, deems uh, financial, whether it's bank accounts, whether it's stocks and bonds, whether it's um, you know, uh, your real estate, whatever finances, you would put someone in your fiduciary responsibility or an agent that you would trust, obviously, um, to be responsible for any financial decisions. Now, that's obviously part of the living trust. So if you're incapacitated or you, you know, you're out of the country, you could essentially use that power of attorney. It just depends on the circumstances. Mm -hmm. um, the guardianship, as I was saying, guardianship, that's within the will and trust. Within our particular state plan, we are also, um, it, it also includes the uh, power of attorney for those minors. Um, which I think is a great tool. It basically gives that fiduciary responsibility, that guardian, and they hold that power of attorney that they're um, that they can make decisions whether it's health or well-being, and it, and it uh, gives that um, that responsibility or that um, fiduciary to that person that's designated as a guardian. Um, we also, which I think is probably the most important document within the living trust is your durable power of attorney for health decisions or your health directive. It is basically you writing how you wish to be cared for, how you wish to, um, upon your death, how you wish to, um, well, actually, while you're living, um, maybe there's something that you wish not to happen while you're in the hospital. This is where you would write it. You would write in that health directive, um, perhaps, you don't want a blood transfusion or whatever the case may be. Maybe there's religious aspects to it. Um, you would assign again that fiduciary agent to be responsible for your healthcare decisions. Um, and I think perhaps that's the most important document within our living trust. Um, the HIPAA authorization. Um, if you work for a school district or even within the real estate uh, world, you know what HIPAA means. Usually that means that um, there is certain information in terms of your health or well-being that are not able to be shared with other people. And that HIPAA authorization gives that, um, the, um, 
it gives the authority to that person that's within that HIPAA to be able to get information about your prognosis, about your diagnosis, um, anything medical um, that, that the doctors could in fact give uh, um, perhaps a relative or what, whatever it might, whoever you have assigned on that HIPAA authorization. Um, your organ donation, that also goes within that health directive. It gives you the, op the, um, the option on organ donation and how you wish to have your organs donated once you pass. Um, and then your final distribution, uh, excuse me, dis distribution, uh, final disposition instructions. And that's how you wish to be laid to rest. Um, do you wish to be cremated? Do you wish to be buried? Do you have, um, do you have those uh, plans already in place? That kind of thing. So within that, all of those documents, what is what we call an estate plan. And um, each document has its own identity and it has its own um, uh, uh, method and reason. Uh, and so that's what we include at Titan Financial as our estate plan. Well, wow, that is very comprehensive. <laughs> now, I've heard people talk about their estate going into probate. Can you explain what that means? Sure, absolutely. Um, so one of the biggest, um, the, the biggest responsibilities, or I wouldn't say responsibilities, more as so um, biggest fears that people have is that um, they are not going to be able to leave a legacy for their children or their um, grandchildren or whatever that might be. Um, I actually call the probate a probate monster. And the reason I call it a probate monster is because, let me explain a little bit what probate is. So probate is basically the legal process of proving a will. It's just the legal process. And in, in doing so, that process, if the trust does not own the assets, then the courts will have to find who is your heirs, who are your heirs. And that process takes up to two years to do. In that process, if this is not in place and the trust does not own the asset of your home or your um your stocks, your bonds, whatever, whatever it might be, then you would have to hire what they call a probate attorney to basically prove that you are in fact the absolute heir to that person. That process can not only cost thousands of dollars, but it takes a long time. Mm -hmm. Basically having this trust, the trust owns the asset. The trust is its own entity and it owns that asset. So it can be dis, dis directly distributed to the heirs or the beneficiaries of that trust. And that way it does not go into a probate account through the courts and the courts don't decide who your heirs are, who they think your heirs are and how that property or those assets are distributed. The trust has it all lined up. It has every, like I said, it's your life instructional manual. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yeah. So that sounds like it's so important for people to get that done because uh, there's, I always hear stories of uh, the, the children hating each other by the end of the process of distributing their parents' assets and everybody mm -hmm. feeling like they got the short end of the stick. And so much of this aggravation could be prevented um, apart from just more assets going to your children or whoever you've designated, but just also a lot of good, you know, better will uh, yeah, in, instead of them all, you know, feeling bad at the end over it. Right. So if somebody wants to write their estate plan with you, what kind of documents do they need to come prepared with? Actually, what we do is we do it in steps. Um, the way that I actually um, process uh, a living trust for a family is I, in, I send out an initial um, message that includes a questionnaire. 
That questionnaire is some of those questions that you have probably never ever had conversations with your family about. For instance, how you wish to leave this earth. Do you wish to be cremated? Do you wish to be buried? Do you want a full service at your funeral? Um, who are the fiduciary people in your life? Um, some of those questions are really tough. And I, and I always say that's half the battle. If you already have those people in your life, that everything's smooth. But thinking of those, for instance, who would be a guardian for my children? I have minor children. Who do I wish to have as a guardian for my children? Those questions we don't talk about. I've been married to my husband for 30 years. Some of those questions we had never even talked about prior to our estate plan being done. So that questionnaire is important. Now, I will tell you, I don't leave you hanging. I definitely go over a lot of it with you um, once we meet for the interview. The interview, um, we set in a, t a time, right now we're doing a lot of things Zoom, obviously, because of our world. Um, hopefully we're in person soon because you, you definitely wanna make that connection with that family. Um, the Zoom interview usually takes between an hour, an hour and a half, and that's going through all of those questions that we've already given you, but we help you through those, those, those questions. So you're not left hanging. It's definitely, it's considered self done, but it's guided with, with a Titan associate. So, um, you know, we help you all the way through the whole process. And um, once that's determined, once we do the interview, then what we do is we um, send out uh, the documents for review um, to make sure that it's, it's kind of, <laughs> it's kind of a long document, as you can probably imagine, it's a legal document, remember, and so there's a lot of language, but again, we break it down for you to make sure you understand each document and what it entails. Um, and then I always set kind of a follow-up to go through those documents to make sure that not only are they looking through them, the, the family, but also we both look through them to make sure that everything looks okay. Once everything is done, all edits are made and we then, um, we, uh, we plan for delivery. We plan for that trust delivery. And in that process, it's notarized. That way it's legally bound. And, um, and then, uh, um, yeah, I think that's the end of that. Now, we also offer, it's an offsite service to, um, and we talked about probate and putting the assets in the name of the trust. Now, most families, are their largest asset is their home. And in that process, as you know, because you're a realtor, you know that's one of the largest purchases that families make is their home. If the trust is in the name um, on the deed, then the trust then owns that asset. And like we talked about before, and it's protected. It's protected from those probate, uh, from pro the probate monster. And, and what I didn't mention is um, we, we've known of cases that, um, that if they're not protected, they lose up to 40% of that asset in legal fees and, um, and probate costs. Because um, you know, in our workshops, we do have workshops every quarter within Titan Financial. We talk about how that's broken down in terms of probate costs. It's quite extensive. So, um, we do have an offsite uh, or off service that does do that grant um, that changes the, the, the name of the deed into the name of the trust. And that's a separate cost. Mm -hmm. um, and then at that time we decide, um, you know, uh, if, they, if they would like that done, that process. We always, we encourage people to do it. I'm not gonna recommend because at Titan Financial, I am not an attorney. I will not recommend, I will encourage, but I will not recommend, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, Chris, you really have a passion for estate planning and being prepared for the future. And I was wondering, how did you get so interested in this? You know, it's funny how um, things happen in your life. Um, so I was actually in uh, the special need world. I, I ran a nonprofit here in Santa Clarita 
for many years called Bridges to Ability. And I served about 500 clients within our, our database um, in here in Santa Clarita that had either intellectual disabilities or um, we had actually changed our mission to include all people of disability with any type of disability. And um, in that process, like I said, I served quite a few families. I was in a lot of circle of care. Uh, unfortunately, because uh, public giving was significantly low um, in 2012, uh, actually from 2008 leading up to 2012, um, we, we had to go to an all volunteer organization and hence uh, that service and that organization is no longer. But I still wanted to really, I was so desperate to still work with those families and serve those families. So I was introduced to um, the, the world of finance and um, lo and behold, I found a way that I could still help and serve those families that I served within Bridges to Ability with a special need trust. And so I started doing special need trust workshops and um, still do them, by the way. Um, COVID's obviously put a little, you know, kibosh in them for the last few years, but um, we plan on getting them back in, 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 um, in circulation. And we have a great attorney that works on special need trust because they're so specialized. Um, and so I was able to um, find that niche and then learn from uh, from so many different people. And um, now I'm, I'm very passionate about helping all families, not just families with a special need loved one, but everyone. So, mm -hmm. and like I said, this is just one branch of what we do at Titan. Um, mm -hmm. We have a whole tree full of different services and providers and um, um, abilities within our, uh, our um, company Titan that, uh, like I said, this is just one branch. So, yeah. but I'm very passionate about this branch and I hold this mm -hmm. branch very, very firmly, but that I do do quite a few other things as you do as well as my partner in that, in that um, company or that uh, financial company. Yeah. Well, I feel like I share the same passion because I was the executor for my parents' um, estate Mm -hmm. And it was really great that my parents had planned ahead and had everything in place. Uh, right. So it's already so overwhelming to lose your parent and then right. to inherit things. And then you don't know how to do anything and what bills right. have to be paid. Exactly. And you got to sell something and pay taxes. And there's so much to do. And, right. and you're trying to manage that along with your life. And it can be almost a full-time job if there's a large estate. And, mm -hmm. and then if there's nothing in place, I just watch so many of my friends' families disintegrate once the matriarch or patriarch passes away uh, because mm -hmm. all the siblings are arguing, nothing goes smoothly, right. the bank right. takes over, the people, hmm, it's just so, so disheartening to see mm -hmm. special relics that should have gone to somebody, broken, thrown away, sold in an auction. Um, right. no communication with the family. And I just want to save my friends and their children from going through that misery. Well, they're and, lucky to have you, Kathy. They have, they're yeah. lucky to have you. <laughs> they are. They're very lucky because whenever I hear someone, when I'm talking to someone, they say they have an estate plan in place. I have to say, I get like a, a warm and cozy that goes over me because I know that that family is going to, they're going to be okay. Now, I will always ask questions about that estate plan because I want to make sure that they, everything, they have everything that's included in that estate plan. Because sometimes people think they have an estate plan, but maybe they just have a last will and testament. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, that last will and testament is great, but it doesn't protect you from probate. It mm -hmm. gives you no protection. So a lot of people think that just because they have that last will and testament, they're, they're good, they're golden. No, that's not the case. The trust actually owns the asset. So I get that a lot. <laughs> yeah. And yes. also the healthcare directive, like I said, I think it's the most important document within that living trust. Um, you know, that way the hospital's not making a decision on where you go and how you're treated. Who wants that? Because you know what that hospital's going to do. 
whatever makes them the most money. What, exactly. So we don't want that. Yeah. We want our wishes fulfilled. Mm -hmm. so, you know, um, you, they're lucky they have you, Kathy, because we have to, I mean, it's the way I see it all the time is it's what people don't know that I know. And I have, I feel like it's my obligation sometimes to share what I know, whether they take it or not. But I, I, I feel you, I, I know exactly how you feel. So mm -hmm. You're lucky. Yeah. Well, and, and our company is lucky to have you because you are really the go-to expert in our office. So Chris, if somebody is interested in, in taking care of their estate plan, how could they get a hold of you? Um, well, I'll tell you what, you can always call. We have a website, um, tifinancials.com, and you can always call the office. Their office number is located on that website, um, and I will get that information. Um, I also, uh, my, um, I have an email through Titan um, Financial, um, and we do have an office. I actually, um, my, you can also call me. You can also you know, if your number's up here as well, Kathy, they can give you a call, which, mm -hmm. whichever, however they wish to contact us. And, and we will make sure that that, um, that all their questions are answered, definitely. Yeah, and our office is in Valencia, so it's conveniently located for many of our viewers. Mm -hmm. Yes, well, absolutely. Chris, it's been lovely having you today. And uh, I'm sure everybody who's watched this must have picked up at least some golden nugget from what you had to share. So I thank you so much for, for being my guest. And, um, you know, look forward to, I hope that our viewers will, uh, you know, take action on this information and, and one way or another get that estate plan taken care of. Well, thank you for having me, Kathy. It was a pleasure. Thank you.